All right, today we're going to talk about record keeping for goat production. Record keeping is often a, a, the chore that most uh, producers don't like to do, and really the only reason we do do it is for tax purposes. But I'm going to try to show you that ta uh, the records can be used for a lot more other than tax purposes. First of all, why is it important? And, and there's this old saying that goes, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And it just goes to tell, you know, show that if you don't know what your operation is doing or how th uh, things are performing, how can you manage it? How can you make changes? How can you be profitable? How can you raise, you know, be in the top uh, production level that you want to be in? Now, there are two types of records that we're going to look at today. One, production records, always usually the most favorite type of records for people to keep. Uh, they're the ones that are more interesting, so, and, but sometimes, a lot of times, we don't really keep up with the necessary records that we need to do. The second part, the financial records, again, most people only keep them for tax purposes, but financial records can be used for other purposes other than uh, IRS. Now there are two methods that we can use to, to keep records, and now I say two methods, just real general methods. The first one is the old uh, tried and true handwritten records. Handwritten records are still very, uh, very valuable and very easy to do. Uh, uh, most people, you know, with the invention of the computer, have gone to computerized records keeping, and. The only real difference between hand, uh, handwritten and computerized records is when you do the handwritten record keeping systems, you have to do the math. Most of the computerized record keeping systems, the computer does the math for you. So usually there's not a, uh, a problem with the math on the computerized. Uh, when we talk about hand, uh, methods, handwritten, you know, there are several different methods that we can look at. The old standard is just a ledger, a book. Uh, you know, people have used this for, you know, uh, decades and, and actually centuries as soon as a ledger book come along. And it's just a real simple fact if we have columns on a page and you, you put the expenses out and write them, you know, underneath the right columns of where they go. There are certain things, you know, like uh, record books that are actually formatted just for keeping up with uh, financial records. Uh, they're getting a little harder to find these days than, uh, than what they used to be in the past just because computerized records and everything on the internet and stuff. So, but if, uh, like Oklahoma, we have Oklahoma Farm and Ranch account book that you can either download off the internet or uh, purchase at some of your uh, uh, county extension offices. One, thing, one, one method that is really not acceptable is, is the shoebox or the dashboard of the pickup truck. Uh, those, those are not really methods, those are just storage of records, not actually keeping of them. When we talk about computerized records, you know, when we talk about production versus financial, production records, there are really uh, very few programs that I've been able to find that do uh, a good job as far as commercial or uh, meat goat operations. Most of the com uh, production record keeping systems are made, meant for purebred operations where they're keeping up with lineages and, and, and bloodlines and stuff like that more often than the production uh, standards that we're going to talk about later in the presentation. Uh, so, I mean, a little bit harder to find than, than, uh, than the financial ones. Now, financial record keeping systems, there are several out there available today. Uh, and, you know, really a lot of times not much difference in one or the other. I know one here at Oklahoma State that we like to uh, use. And the reason why we use it is, is because it's just real simple. It's the easiest one to find uh, when, we, uh, look, uh, when we try to go out and, and producers to look for it. And that is Quicken. Quicken's a program, again, less than $60, and, and really and truthfully, I can teach you how to run Quicken in less than three or four hours, and you'll be a whiz at it. Let's switch to production records, and let's keep and talk about, you know, what kind of records that we really need to keep that are important, uh, you know, and what, why production records are important. First of all, they help us evaluate our animal's performance. To be a, a profitable operation, you're going to have to make culling decisions, which animals to keep, which animals to sell and get rid of. If you don't have production records, sometimes that is a very difficult decision to make. And a lot of times we will keep the wrong animal uh, over, the, uh, over another animal. And that's sometimes usually because we have an emotional attachment to animals. Maybe that was the kid's show, uh, show goat and, oh, we can't get rid of her. She was such a nice show goat, but in reality, she's not that good of a production goat. Uh, so we have to keep up records to know you know which animals perform the best and so we keep only those performers and not the weak performers uh, really today you know when we talk about cattle 
and even hogs and even sheep to some degree, there are some standards uh, that those uh, uh, in, uh, species use. In goats, there are no standards that have been uh, came, uh, developed as of yet. Uh, we, so what we're trying to do is we really kind of take the sheep standards and kind of make them fit uh, uh, the goat standards today, or goat in, uh, operations. The first thing that you're going to have to do with any kind of record keeping system, or production record keeping system, is you're going to have to individually ID your animals. Uh, a goat is a goat is a goat. All, a lot of goats look alike without uh, you know, IDs or ear tags or some way of identifying those animals. It gets a little difficult to, uh, to uh, tie records back to those animals. So once we get these IDs, uh, you know, uh, get the animals' IDs, then we can keep up with births, matings, health uh, issues, and health and our problems that these animals have. One, uh, so I'm going to go over a few performance measures that I think are very important when we're looking at production records. And, and, and the reason I pick these over all the other ones is because they're the kind of ones that tell us which ones you know, are, uh, help us remain profitable in our operation. The first one that I'm going to talk about is pregnancy percentage. It's not that difficult to uh, calculate. Basically, just the number of does diagnosed pregnant divided by the number of does exposed. My example here, I got you know 100 does uh, that we in a herd, and we end up with 89 of them being pregnant. That gives us a pregnancy percentage of, of 89%. Uh, besides letting us know, you know know how uh, how our reproduction uh, program is going, this also ident helps identify those animals that maybe are having problems getting bred or rebreeding back, and so therefore we don't have to keep those animals until the kidding season is over with. We can actually make culling decisions three months, four months earlier or alternate breeding decisions. One, you know, just because they're pregnant doesn't typically mean that they're, uh, those are going to have live kids or viable kids. So another uh, performance measure that we look at is kidding percentage. Now we look at the number of kids born. Uh, and you can you know, do this a couple of different ways. Uh, but so sort of one way we have listed here is number of kids born, uh, dead or alive. And you divide that by the number of does exposed. Uh, and a, you know, again, example, 100 does, uh, 87 bucks uh, born, 70, uh, 78 does, four born dead, and we count all those up, and it comes up to 169. We divide that by 100 and come up with a, a percentage of 169%. Uh, you could leave the dead ones off. That would just let you know how many were born alive. And in this example, it'd be 165%. Uh, or you could calculate the death loss percentage another way. So either way, this lets us know, you know how many kids are being born. In a typical uh, commercial uh, goat operation, we're going to need that 170 percent uh, mark to be profitable. Anything under 100, you know, anything between 150 and 170 percent is going to be, you know, pr uh, marginal as far as production goes, and probably uh, have an opportunity more often to lose money than make money. And like that, anything over 170 percent, you know, uh, usually remains profitable. Uh, death loss percentage, again, it's kind of a s similar deal, number of kids that have died. And, you know, before, you know, died before they were able to be sold, uh, you know, either de uh, born dead or died before weaning, and you divide that by the number of does exposed. You know, for example, we had four born dead a while ago, two died later uh, for some reason. We divide that by a 100 doe example, and we come up with a 6%. Uh, one thing I've learned in raising goats is that, you know, uh, uh, Kids are going to have, there's going to be a certain amount of kids that are going to uh, uh, die, and we don't know So we, ha what happens, but we need to keep that number at a minimum. You know, anything over 10% is going to cause us some uh, profitability problems. Now we're going to switch a little bit over and talk a little bit about financial records. And again, you know, I list two reasons why we should keep financial records or why people keep records. And first of all, everybody talks about the tax implications. And that is a, a pretty important reason because the IRS does require that we keep records for tax purposes if we're going to claim any of the expenses or, or, or do our own Schedule F on our taxes. But the one thing that I like to talk about doing is we use these financial records to measure financial performance. Now, when we talk about records, there's kind of four, we can group them into four groups: income, expenses, assets, and liabilities. And we're going to talk about each of these as we go along. Okay, income and expenses is just like what it sounds. Income is just basically money received from products and services. In this case, in a commercial meat goat operation, the money received from the kids that we sell, uh, or the uh, if we're selling a, a 
animals for uh, breeding purposes, or even those coal animals that we sell, that's income coming into our operation. Now we also, so, over time, we'll sell assets, you know, uh, maybe we've sold a buck that we've bought in the past, or we maybe we, we bought a, a, a bunch of panels or something else and we've sold those panels off, that's money received from the sale of capital assets. Expenses, just like it sounds, it's money we've paid out for, you know, feed, fertilizer, supplies, anything like that that we're going to use in an operation. Now, one of capital expenses, again, money used to purchase those capital assets, such as a new breeding doe, a new buck, or a new tractor, uh, or any type of new equipment. Now, on capital expenses, those expenses we do not claim on our Schedule F as a yearly expense. Those expenses are depreciated out over the useful life of that uh, asset. Uh, example, a, breeding, a buck that if we bought for $500, uh, useful life on the IRS is, is uh, five years. So using straight line depreciation, it would be $100 a year that we would claim as an expense for that buck. There is one exception as far as how we claim uh, those expenses. Where we could actually claim all of the uh, expense in one year, and that would be using Section 179 depreciation. Assets and liabilities. Uh, very easily put, assets or uh, you know is everything that you own uh, it goes down to the animals that you own, the fences, the fences, the equipment, anything that has to do with that farming operation, even your truck, trailer, stuff like that. Those are assets. Anything that has a value. Uh, OSU has a good fact sheet on that that sort of that explains uh, what an asset is and actually helps you keep up with those assets. The second part of that liabilities is what you owe or who you, uh, what you owe for for those assets money borrowed basically notes to banks maybe you've borrowed money for operating expenses borrowed money to buy the animals uh, and also to a lot of times something that's forgotten with uh, production agriculture is maybe we've used credit cards and those credit cards are actually liabilities and any money that we've borrowed uh, you know to maybe purchase feed or do repairs because these days most ag uh, ag companies will accept credit cards so those are liabilities that, that go on our uh, balance sheet that OSU also has a fact sheet 972 that deals with that uh, we use all these records also too to kind of create the financial statements and these financial statements help us uh, measure our financial uh, well-being and, and actually our stress level in our operation. And there's three main financial statements that uh, we need to uh, deal with. The balance sheet, the cash flow statement, and the income statement. Now balance sheet, it's, it's basically it measures the financial position of the business or in this case your uh, GOAT operation. How you put a balance sheet together is, 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 is quite simple. Assets, what is owned, and then liabilities, what is owed. Now, what the difference between the assets and liabilities, and, and you know, subtract your liabilities from your assets, that is called your net worth, the worth of the business. Again, OSU's fact sheet number 752 explains uh, what a balance sheet is. I've got an example up here on the screen, and it just kind of lists out uh, some uh, assets and liabilities. Examples of assets are cash in our, in our checking account, maybe some savings, our breeding livestock, our trucks, our land. You, you, you assign a value to that. In our example, we come up with $193,750. Our liabilities, interest that we owe, operating uh, note, uh, goat note, truck note, land notes, those are all uh, uh, liabilities that we owe to other people come up to $155,399. You subtract that uh, liabilities from the assets and we come up with a net worth here of $38,351. So, you know, it's very important that that net worth be positive, but also by doing a balance sheet on an annual basis, we can see if the, if the net worth of our business is growing. And that's the whole goal in our operation is we want that net worth to get larger over time because that's, we're building our worth into the business. Cash flow, uh, what we're doing when we look at a cash flow is we're looking at the inflows of money uh, coming into the operation and the outflows or money going out of the operation for a set accounting period, typically a year. Okay, now we, you could look at this on a monthly basis, but typically we look at it at a year and then we might divide that year up into months. So we'd have 12, uh, a 12 month cash flow statement. Uh, 
what a great thing about a cash flow statement is it helps us determine you know the shortages and surpluses or the times of the year that we'd have shortages and surplus in our operation because again it looks at the money coming in for like I say a month and the money that would go out in that month and it would indicate to the the manager you know which months are good months that to, to, to either purchase new uh, assets or to have new note payments due and then it also lets you indicate in which months you would have to go to your uh, lender and maybe ask for a, a, a loan, short-term loan to cover the shortages. Again, we have o Oklahoma State, we have a fact sheet 751 that deals with the cash flow statement. The third statement is an income statement. A lot of folks, uh, when asked about a, a, you know, what your income statement is, they'll s confuse a Schedule F. Uh, from their taxes as an income statement, and that's not quite true. A Schedule F, you know, are, is is what we tell the government that are what our incomes and, and expenses are. When we're doing our operation, we want to do an income statement, you know, that is truly uh, what the farm operation is, and it's simply, you know, revenues minus our expenses. And when I say revenue, money received from goods and services, it does not count any money that you have borrowed does not count uh, any time you have sold any capital assets. Uh, again, that's things that we're going to count in other places, but not on our income statement. When we talk about expenses, we're only talking about those expenses that were used d during the operation. We're not talking about uh, purchase of capital uh, assets such as a breeding animal or a buck. Again, those go in a different spot. OSU's fact sheet uh, 753 goes into really good detail of an income statement. And quite simply, an income statement it just tells us if the operation is profitable or not. We use these uh, three statements, the balance sheet, the cash flow, and the income statement to uh, measure the financial stress or the financial well-being of our operation. Uh, you know, and there's th really three main things that I like to look at, liquidity, uh, solvency, and profitability. A fourth thing that we could possibly look at, re repayment capacity. And, but each one of these are ratios or numbers that we can de uh, determine from our uh, uh, our income statements, our balance sheets, our cash flows, and that number will give us an indication of whether the operation is either in low stress or good times, or maybe yellow or cautionary times, or even you know hard times or high stress times. Oklahoma has a program that will help uh, Oklahoma farmers if they're wanting to get in, you know, really dive into this, and they're maybe just a little apprehensive as how to build. Your, uh, a balance sheet or how to go through their record keepings and do all uh, and, and determine all this. The program is called IFMAPS and IFMAPS is a free confidential service uh, for, uh, for all Oklahoma farmers and what it does is we have trained financial specialists to come out and work one-on-one -on -one with farmers to help dev develop these financial statements and actually help you develop your whole entire business plan and maybe evaluate changes to your plan if you want to do it or just to see how the plan uh, how your business is doing if you're interested in that all you have to do is contact your local county extension office and or we have a 1-800 number uh, that you could call and, and get in contact with this uh, this program and again it's all free and strictly confidential in conclusion one thing I just want to stress is that both production and financial records are important a lot of times producers want to just worry about the production records, but financial records are just as important and need to be kept up with the same diligence that production records are kept up. It really doesn't matter how you want to keep your records. You can keep them on handwritten or computerized or a combination of both. As long as you keep them and keep them on a, on a regular basis and a consistent basis, uh, you know, and not once a year when it comes tax time. Uh, and again, records, you know, besides tax purposes, records can help us measure the production and financial efficiency of an operation. This lets us know if we're going down the right path or if we're going down the right road where we want to be and we want our operation to end up in the future and then also if we're trying to remain profitable.